One of the items that was surprisingly overhauled with Phantom Liberty and Patch 2.0 was Black Lace. This was that secret chem that Dum Dum would offer you during the pickup, but only if you had the Street Kid Life Path and sided with the Maelstrom. You'd only get one copy of this and it was a single use item, making it easily one of the rarest items in all of Cyberpunk, but still with 2.0 it had its stats reworked. Well it turns out Black Lace getting overhauled wasn't random, as now in Dogtown you're able to find Black Lace Mark II. This will notably increase your damage dealt whether it be critical damage or just regular damage, as well as increase several other stats, but at the cost of half of your HP bar. And there are a variety of ways to find this. Sometimes you'll just find it on the bodies of random enemies, but more consistently, if you find these junky enemies, they almost always drop a Black Lace Mark II, but I've even seen reports of this dropping from airdrops or even just randomly in containers. And depending on your build, Black Lace Mark II can be seriously powerful and really increase your damage output. With Patch 2.0, and specifically the Quick Hack Q, the order by which you're uploading Quick Hacks on enemies is incredibly important now. Something you may have not known is you can actually customize the order of the Quick Hacks as they appear on your menu. which slot you place the quick hack in doesn't matter at all. And what's relevant here for the order is the timing. The last quick hack you slot in will always appear at the top of this menu, and you can work backwards from that. So basically, just assign the quick hacks you want in reverse order. Whatever you want at the top of this list should be the last thing you slot in, and whatever you want at the bottom has to be the first thing you apply. This can be incredibly useful, as now it's much quicker and easier to get quick quick hack combos off in combat. Although one technically hidden change from patch 2.0 that was made worse by patch 2.01 is almost all of these passive skills are broken right now. So even though you may have leveled up a skill high enough to unlock a new ability for your character, but in the current build of the game, it likely isn't actually doing anything, at least depending on when you're watching it. Almost certainly with the next update, this will be addressed, but as far as right now on patch 2.01, many of these are broken. Phantom Liberty has two secret endings that I bet most of you didn't know about. After breaking into Dogtown and watching the president ship crash, you'll start the quest Hole in the Sky. Here, of course, Songbird is tasking you with getting to the crash site so you could save the president. But what you may have not known is you can just not. After dropping down into Dogtown, you could just not drive to the crash site at all. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Get to the crash site now! Songbird will progressively get more frustrated and desperate, telling you that you need to get there now, but after just a brief amount of driving in the wrong direction, you can secure the president's fate. Congrats, V. You just killed Rosalind Myers and the NUSA. Pray we don't meet again, and I mean ever. After this, a relic glitch effect is triggered with a fade to black, almost like Songbird is completely exiting the relic in our head, and you're gonna wake up in a nearby patch of grass with Johnny back and talking to us. Still with us? Oh, what the... What happened? Your presidential rescue op. Miserable failure. Honestly, though, good fucking riddance. <sighs> okay. So now what? Huh. We go on living. Start by finding us a drink. From there, you'll find the job failed and you are locked out of the main story of Phantom Liberty. I mean, of course, the president's dead. There's nothing else for you to do here. And you'll even get a surprise call from Mr. Hands, who's going to welcome us to Dogtown to confirm he got us registered in Dogtown system so we could come and go as we please. Typically, this would happen a bit later into the quest. And this will effectively open up Dogtown to you and it'll give you full access to all of the side quests available in the district. As well as I feel like this is a nice counter to the typical RPG problem where urgency isn't real. In this case, if you're not urgent, you will just fail. I did attempt to go to the president's crash ship just to see what I could find there, but unfortunately due to not doing the quest, I wasn't able to get over there. And interestingly enough, this is not the only opportunity to fail Phantom Liberty. A bit deeper into Phantom Liberty, during the quest Lucretia My Reflection, this is the one where you recruit Solomon Reed to help the president. After you recruit Reed and return to the safe house where the president is located, you could just choose to back out of the mission altogether. Solomon Reed will ask if this high-risk mission is actually worth it for us as a random mercenary. And you, V, whatever bond you two have fails to explain why you're here in the first place. I don't know how much they're paying, but you better ask yourself, is it worth it? Which honestly, yeah, this is a fairly compelling argument to just get out of there as soon as possible. If you do choose to go down this path, you'll get several warnings before eventually failing the quest line. Wonky about this. I'm out. Now listen close, V. I'm only gonna say this once. Songbird promised you help with the relic. Now I will use any and all NUS assets to fulfill that promise. Consider it my contribution to your deal. Walk out of here, 
and the deal's null and void. Understood. Not a bluff, V. Finally showing me your true face. That the way of things, huh? <laughs> Hard pass from me, then. If I gotta die, I'm not gonna die fighting someone else's war. I see. Well, we'll manage without you. <sighs> Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Huh. Gotta be the shortest FIA career ever. Might not be an agent, but you're definitely special, V. Similar to the other alternate ending, you are once again free to explore around Dogtown as you wish, and after a few days pass, Reed will even text you that the president has escaped successfully, although if you try to respond to acquire about Songbird's status, you'll find his number was disconnected. So this time around, the president does survive, but the rest of the DLC is left open-ended. I really love that CDPR added these as options, although yeah, sure, they're kind of pointless because you're just skipping a bunch of content. I think they're really nice from a role-playing perspective, and I think it does elevate Phantom Liberty overall to have some genuine choices choice and consequence along the way. But something else you may have noticed while recruiting Solomon Reed is he mentions how the only reason he was able to answer our call is due to it being his day off. And halfway through this drive, he even gets a call from his job asking him to come into work, where he does reveal that he's now working as a bouncer, describing how lots of former military work there and he fits in. Well, funny enough, before starting Phantom Liberty, you can actually find Solomon Reed doing this. He'll be at the Malted Iguana Liquors in downtown. It's super easy to find as this is where the fixer Dino is located. So just be the bouncer at the door with a classified background, which makes a ton of sense as this is exactly how Alex appears on your scanner when you first meet her in her bar. You're able to get Lizzie Wizzy's headgear in Cyberpunk 2077. During the quest, you know my name, where Lizzie Wizzy performs at the party. Right before you're tasked with exiting the Black Sapphire, you could find Lizzie standing at the bar after her performance. If you've already completed the quest of violence, where you do help out Lizzie, you'll have a set of custom dialogue options available for her. And if you mention loving her unique style, she'll even give give you her unique headgear on the spot. The Amakiri sound cutter will take up the head and face slots on your character and just has a really unique and standout look. And funny enough, there's actually a unique interaction if you do this in reverse as well. If you meet Lizzie for the first time at the Black Sapphire and then later on do the violence quest, you'll also get some unique comments. Saw you with the Black Sapphire? Hella gay you put on. Listen, I don't generally brag about visiting that place, so... Our little secret, okay? One of the secret items added with Phantom Liberty are the MaxTac Mantis Blades. You are technically able to get these during the main story of Phantom Liberty. Inform Mr. Hands about the MaxTac Convoy and he'll reward them to you after the fact. But there's honestly a bit more of a straightforward method to get this. And this involves a secret character, that with Melissa Rory. One of the secret quests that has always been in Cyberpunk 2077 is Bullets, and this now has multiple levels of secrets within it. This quest won't spawn on its own. Instead, you must visit this clothing store in the downtown district of Night City. Talk to the vendor and shop a bit and then leave. After waiting a day, the next time you return to the store, you'll notice some of the dialogue prompts with the vendor have changed. And the vendor will even recognize you. Well, after you do shop with him, a cyber psycho will break into the store and the Bullets quest does begin. Simply take down the cyber psycho or wait around until MaxTac shows up to help you out with the fight. And this MaxTac lieutenant here is very notable. She'll question you and Zane after the cyber psycho is dealt with and this is going to be none other than Melissa Rory. This is the character that was in that original Cyberpunk 2077 teaser trailer from 2013. But in that trailer, she's the cyber psycho and MaxTac's trying to take her down. As we find her in Cyberpunk 2077, she's now joined MaxTac. And as she comes into the fight, you'll even notice her mantis blades look different compared to all of the others in the game as this is the the original design of Mantis Blades they used back in 2013. After the quest, there's going to be some dialogue options to highlight her unique Mantis Blades, as well as during the quest The Hunt with River, you could find a terminal entry about Melissa Rory in the NCPD HQ. It describes how she has some antisocial behavior returning, so they have to increase her chem dosage, and how this has been a problem with several other members of MaxTac. Seems like MaxTac has been recruiting several cyber psychos to their ranks, but the new aspect of this with Phantom Liberty is you can now kill Melissa Rory and loot some special max tack mantis blades from her body. You're able to do this right as the bullet's quest ends. Simply re-enter the store and start attacking Melissa Rory, but be prepared for a fight. All the other max tack members and even some of the outside cops will also attack you. And of course, since you're attacking max tack, you'll also immediately get a wanted level. So after taking out Melissa Rory, make sure you actually loot the mantis blades, but then you're going to have to flee from the police. And there are a couple of quick and easy ways to get away from the police after patch 2.0. You can simply run into any main or side job area area and your wanted level will almost immediately disappear and this will even work with ripper docks and other vendor locations as 
well. Alternatively, if you do have Phantom Liberty, the faceplate cyberware has a secret functionality where as long as the police have lost visual of you, you can activate the faceplate cyberware and you'll immediately lose your wanted level as you disguise yourself. But either way, after losing the police, you will now have the max tac mantis blades for yourself. This is going to feature a unique blue color as well as they're going to have some special effects such as causing enemies to bleed, but also after finishing an enemy who is bleeding, you're going to regain some HP. So while using these, you could cause enemies to bleed, then rack together a couple of kills on those enemies to keep your HP high and heal any damage that you may have taken. Another pretty funny feature is you're not actually able to enter into Dogtown in a police vehicle. The phone you use to contact Salomon Reed has a variety of secret numbers you can call for some funny reactions from V or Johnny. Jesus, V. Whoa. The food, medical, and junk vendors located in Phantom Liberty are going to have special items that permanently increase one of your stats. These are going to have the iconic background and are usually quite expensive, but of course it's a permanent stat increase so it's quite powerful. And one of these vendors is a bit more special. These two in Dogtown are actually the current co-CEOs of CD Projekt. They'll have some brief dialogue about changing up their business model beyond just distribution. This is a reference to CDPR themselves beginning as a Polish distributor and localizer for Western games before they actually started creating games of their own. And the items in this vendor's inventory correspond to past game releases. So the price on each of these games will correspond to the real-world release year of those corresponding games. In the Dogtown market, behind the weapons vendor, there is a case that says, Hello, Mr. Wick on it, and Johnny Silverhand will react to this. During the main story of Phantom Liberty, you'll get the Chimera Core. This after, of course, the fight with the Chimera. This can be converted into a variety of incredibly powerful weapon mods, or alternatively, you can actually place the Chimera Core in your apartment as quite the display piece. With Patch 2.0, you can now buy cars directly from your computer by going to the Auto Fixer website. And when using weapons in vehicles, do note that you have unlimited ammo here. Shoot a cops all day, and your ammo will not drain. And if you're looking for more hidden features in Cyberpunk, check out this video, where I go over 15 secret features available in the base game.